Hey friends, welcome back to Civil Engineering Mastery. In this video, we are going to discuss about the effective span of the staircase. So when we start designing the staircase, it is very important to know how we can take the effective span of the staircase because depending upon the effective span, only we get the waist step thickness. So it is very important to know about the effective span of the staircase as per IS 456-2000. So without further delay, let's begin now. First, let's start off with the few technical terms which we use in the staircase. When you take the staircase plan, you will be having the support that is mid landing beam. This is the very important technical term which you have to understand clearly. And then this is your going and then this is your landing area. If you look into the section, you can come to know, we'll start from the base like whatever the support either we can provide the support as a or even we can provide the plinth beam as the support for the staircase so it will start like this and then if you look into here it is the mid landing beam this is your section one if you take this section it start from here and then this is the mid landing beam this is the going and then this is the landing and you have the support mid landing at mid landing level you have the support so whenever you take any staircase, you will be having the landing and then again it will start to the next floor level. See, in section 2, we have the next level. So it start from the mid landing level and then it go and reach the roof level. So at roof level also we have the support that is the roof beam. So this is your going and mid landing level, you know, this is your landing slab. And this slab we call it as a waste slab. Now let's look into the effective span of the. We have two types of spans. One is star spanning longitudinally and then star spanning transversely. So before getting into the effective span, you should understand this concept clearly. When you take the star span longitudinally, so that looks like this. Landing slab spanning in the same direction as stars. This is star spanning longitudinally. That means you are taking the span of the star slab. That means you are going to take the span in the longitudinal direction. So that is parallel to the stars. When you consider the star span transversely, you are going to take the span in this direction. I think you can understand clearly. So this is span parallel to the stars and in this transverse direction we are taking the span which is perpendicular to the stars. Next uh, let's look into the star spanning longitudinally which is given in IS 456 class number 33 in that effective span needs to be taken as the following aspects. So in A it is given as the support is at the top and bottom of risers star spanning longitudinally that is parallel to riser. So if you take the effective span, the support is provided at the top and bottom of riser. So this is the bottom of riser and this one is the top of the riser. The support is provided at the top and the bottom of the riser. So we are considering the effective span in the longitudinal direction which is parallel to the riser. So here the effective span is center to center distance between the support. Next one is B. In this we have to consider the effective span distance equal to the going of stars plus at each end either half the width of the landing or 1 meter whichever is smaller. This is supported on the edge of the landing. So here star spanning longitudinally which is parallel to the Riser. So, we need to consider the effective span. So, for this we need to refer table 1. See, in this plan you can understand clearly this is the going and this is x distance and x distance and here you have y distance and y distance. So, we have the support at the edge of the landing. So, x and y is given here and span in meters. So, how we have to consider this effective span is if x and y are less than 1 meter, we have to consider the span as going length, length of this going plus x and plus y. So, that, that will be the effective span. In the next case, 
if x is less than 1 meter and y is greater than 1 meter then we have to consider the effective span in this way that is going plus x plus 1 meter. The next condition if x is greater than 1 meter and y is less than 1 meter then we have to consider the effective span as going plus y plus 1 meter. In the last one, if both x and y are greater than 1 meter, then we have to consider going plus 1 meter plus 1 meter. So, in this way, we have to take the effective span. And the last one is the landing slab spans in the same direction as stairs. They shall be considered as acting together to form a single slab and the span determined as the distance center to center of the supporting beam or walls the going being measured horizontally. So, this is the case. Let me explain you with the diagram. So, here landing slab spanning in the same direction as stars that is spanning in the longitudinal direction. So, at the edge of the landing we have the support. So, this is the two support and effective span has to be measured as the distance between the center to center of the support. Next, let's look into some other alternative support arrangements. In this figure A, the support is provided at the edges A and D at the edge of the landing and in figure B, the support is provided at, similarly, we can even provide the support at A, C and D. Instead of B, we can even provide the support at edge C. Next, in figure C, we have the support at A, B, C, D. Next in figure D we have the support at B and C. This landing slab will act as a cantilever. So, we have the support at edges B and C. Next let us look into the star spanning transversely. As we have seen in the beginning here the slab is supported between two stringer beam or walls. That means we have to consider the span between these two support. So, this is the span in this case. Next, let us look into the cantilever slab from a spandrel beam or walls. If you take a cantilever slab, so the support is the beam or wall, spandrel beam or wall. So, the steps will be like this. So, we need to consider the span as the width of the flight. So, this is the span in this case. Next, let us look into the doubly cantilever slab from a central beam. So, if you take a central beam, this we can even call it as a spine beam. So, this side is also a cantilever and this side is also a cantilever. This is the width of the flight and this we need to consider as a span. Both sides cantilever span. So, friends, that is all about the effective span of the staircase which is supported longitudinally as well as transversely. I hope you all understand the concepts clearly. If you really like the content, please hit the like button and also share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe this channel for more videos. If you have any queries, you can just post it in the comment box. Thank you for watching.